It was May the 16th, and my wife and I were on our way back to Truman Reservoir to do a little tail race fishing. But along the way, we thought it would be nice to go by the old swinging bridge and maybe take a few pictures. We had not been on the old swinging bridge since it had been remodeled and reopened. The swinging bridge is located about two miles below the dam, and this is looking up toward the dam. The white foam that you see on the surface is caused from the spillway. This is a view looking downstream from the swinging bridge. As usual, there were several people already fishing when we arrived at the dam. My wife seems to always catch a fish before I get my lure tied on. When you're fishing the tail race, you have to continuously monitor the water because it moves back and forth. The water as you're looking at it now is moving from right to left. So I let my lure sink a little longer to get down to the fish and I reel it in very slow. When the water is moving toward me as you see it here, 
I don't let the lure sink as much, and when I retrieve it, I retrieve it faster. When the water is moving from left to right, it feels unnatural to the fish because they're used to water moving downstream. But once again, since the water is moving, you let the lure sink more and retrieve it slower. My wife had been absolutely killing fish on a pink crappie max swimmer, so I decided to do a little research. I decided to put a pink crappie max swimmer on the bottom hook and a chartreuse one on the top hook. I said to my wife, why do you keep using pink jigs? You've never seen a pink minnow in the water. And she said, I've never seen a white one or a chartreuse one either. I switched and put my pink on top and the, and the chartreuse on the bottom and they hit the bottom one. They're, hit, they're hitting the bottom one. Break it off. The conclusion I think I'm drawing from this research is that if you only use pink 
and if you wear a pink visor, they will definitely hit pink. Suddenly, my research project was interrupted when I hooked into something really big. Oh my lord, look what I've got. A big spoonbill. At this point, the water was coming straight into the bank, which was helping me contain the big spoonbill out in front of me. I was using only 8 pound test line and I knew that if the direction of the current ever changed it would all be over. After fighting the fish for several more minutes I noticed that the current was beginning to move upstream and the fish was beginning to move with it. After several more minutes, the current began moving even faster, and I knew that if I had any chance of landing this fish at all, I had to follow him. Whoops. I don't know why he don't cut his line. Now I had another problem. One of the fishermen further up the bank had cast his line over mine and had hung his jig on my line. The fisherman who had hung my line, instead of cutting his line, pulled my line in toward him and tried to get his jig untangled from my line. Now the problem was that there were several fishermen ahead of me and my problem was how to get past these fishermen without messing up their fishing.
at this point you could see that the water was really moving faster toward the dam. now I'm well over 200 yards above the point where I hooked this fish. Sometimes you can pump your rod up and down and get a big fish to turn, but it wasn't working here. At this point, I knew I had no chance of landing this fish, but I still didn't want to give up. Suddenly, it was all over. The jig pulled loose from the fish. Unbelievably, I was able to retrieve my lure, so I guess I won part of the battle. Fighting that big spoonbill was a lot of fun, but after the battle was over, we decided to go back down, catch a few more fish before we headed home. When the wife outfishes the husband, I don't think they ought to rub it in. I don't think that's fair.
What a great day. What a great trip. Thanks for coming along.